Will the president really shut down the government if he doesn't get his southern wall? That's what was brought up at a raucous meeting in Arizona. Speaking of spirited meetings, one Oklahoma congressman had one this week, and he's our guest right now on Flashpoint. Moderator Kevin Ogle and Kirk Humphreys. This is Flashpoint. Good morning and welcome to Flashpoint. We are in a new building, a new area, which is going to kind of evolve over the weeks you join us on Flashpoint. So stay tuned for that. On the big show today, our Labor Commissioner, Melissa Houston, is back sitting in for Kirk, who's out uh, saving the world for democracy somewhere. <laughs> Thank like you for being with us. Thank you for having like me. You we appreciate it. And Congressman Tom Cole, a uh, many-time guest here on Flashpoint, is back to talk about not only what's going on in Washington, which he is very mm -hmm. much... Uh, important cog in that right now, especially for the Republicans, mm -hmm. but also about the town hall meeting you had in Norman, which got pretty spirited at times. Yeah, right. So anyway, thank you both for being here. Thank we you. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Right. Uh, Congressman, you had what would not be termed as a raucous meeting compared to some of President Trump's. <laughs> I'm, I'm a minor <laughs> leaguer compared to the president. But you did have a pretty spirited crowd sure. in Norman that were pretty critical of President Trump's policies overall. Yeah, uh, no question about it. And uh, But it was a good crowd. It uh, was an interested and engaged crowd, uh, spirited but honestly polite. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, hey, I, I actually enjoyed the exchange, and you always learn something from it. Uh, and you hope that maybe you can give them some information and insight that they might not have had. So I, I think it uh, did what it was supposed to do. President Buchanan once said, President B I'm going to quote President Buchanan. You go right ahead. He said once, I like the noise of democracy. <laughs> the noise of democracy. When I read this headline story in the Oklahoman, there's, there's you on the front page this week. Cold faces, crowd in Norman. I thought, the, forget the noise of democracy, the voices of democracy. And you just said you learn something when you go to these meetings. You do. Tell the viewers what you learn from these people. Well, and not only that, just to kind of set it up uh, mm -hmm. for the folks, there was some yeah. cheering, like for the demise of the health care bill. <laughs> yeah. I was not happy. And I was there not was, cheering. There was some <laughs> booing as well. Uh, yeah. but so are you used to that sure. in your district? Yeah. You know, frankly, people seem to think these are new. What, what happens is that different crowds come at different times. Uh, when uh, President uh, Obama was there, we had actually huge crowds, and they were always very critical of President Obama. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, as President Trump, we have large crowds again, particularly in this year, uh, and they're very critical of President Trump. Uh, so it's usually the opposition that's the most energized. I always like to joke to my staff, look, nobody comes to a town hall to tell the congressman he's doing a good job. <laughs> They're coming for right. some other reason. And yeah. that's fair enough. I mean, you know, it's helpful to know that, to have that exchange. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I've always been a big believer in them. And, uh, yeah. you know, we've done them in Ardmore and in Ada and in Chickasha so far. Yeah. We've got but you enjoy uh, Midwest them. City. You've got a lot. I do. Yeah, I mean, I like good getting at out it. amongst people. Yeah. I really do. Tell so us about her. her. Tell us about her real quick. I know she's going to ask you a hard hitting question. Well, but you're Norman. She's Norman. That's right. You know, my congressman. Years ago, I'm not Norman. I'm Moore. This okay. is a really important okay. point. Okay. Oh, there uh, you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, but. Uh, oh, you still know Melissa. This is, uh, I had the opportunity to get to know her when I was Secretary of State, and she was out working at the Capitol on crime issues. And uh, I think I wrote her her first campaign check when you she did. wrote yes, for, sir. ran for the legislature. Uh, mm -hmm. Almost won a very difficult seat for us. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think it's had a wonderful career, obviously, at the Attorney General's office office now as our labor commissioner. Yeah. I wish she would run again. I'm a huge fan. I think yeah. she is a, a, a legitimately very, very gifted uh, public figure really? in public service. We're getting a glimpse yeah. well, into the Republican wow. Party strategy well, right thank here. You. Yeah. You know, you, thank he, you. He, he totally disarmed you. He knows what he's doing because you're getting ready to break exactly. him down <laughs> with a hard hitting <laughs> question. Hard -hitting now question. Now he's that hard question. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, Trump yeah. will take up for uh, you. Yeah. 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 That's right. I'll do well, my part. I was just curious. I mean, you've been covering the state at these different town halls. What are some of the topics that you're hearing, and are they different in the different parts? Differ a little bit. Uh, Norman was very much health care, and I would say if I had to pick one out of all of them, health care has been the biggest one mm -hmm. uh, because it's been the most controversial issue. The president himself is a very controversial character, uh, and so uh, uh, although you really get a very different view there, I would say 
uh, his hold in uh, rural and small town Oklahoma is still very, very strong. Uh, obviously, uh, Norman uh, is, uh, you know, to the left of small town Oklahoma. And so you have a lot more opposition there. Although I always point out to people he did carry Cleveland County with 59 percent of the vote. So it's not as if. But he wouldn't weak. today, would he? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he, actually, I think he would still certainly carry the district. Remember, he carried every single county. I know, in the but he's at a 33% Once approval rating. Well, that means he's 33% in Oklahoma. That's okay. a national number. I actually think his numbers are much stronger. And you see a real division. He's not nearly as popular in the Tulsa and Oklahoma City metro areas. Mm -hmm. But in rural Oklahoma, he is every bit as popular as he was on but the But at town hall meeting, you said Trump should have come forward with a health care plan. He hey, should have, honestly, yeah. but I also said that I think this failure was primarily a congressional failure, not a presidential failure. Okay. Uh, we'd been there a long time before mm -hmm. him. We'd been running on this long before he was a candidate. We got it through the House, so I'm proud the House did its part, and I, I can argue pretty persuasively, I think, that uh, the bill we passed is better than the situation we're living under in Oklahoma. But obviously, you know, we fumbled the ball in the Senate. Uh, now, not McCon our senators, it, I want to make that very Is it Mitch McConnell's clear. fault, like Trump says? No, I, honestly, I think he did everything he could do. You've got a group, obviously you had three hard no's, but there's really about eight to ten senators that I think struggle with this. There's a couple uh, that, that will never vote for anything other than repeal, and, that, and I'm not saying this critically, but Rand Paul and Mike Lee would probably yeah, be yeah. there. You had the three no votes, and I would say two or three others that have basically bought into Obamacare. They're, they usually come from Medicaid expansion states. They usually have governors that are strong. You're talking about Republicans. Too. Yeah, yeah, Republicans. And then there's another couple that I'm not going to name, but let's just say they'll never be in profiles and courage. They're not going to ever be the deciding vote on anything. So what impact does that have on the midterm elections? I mean, it seems like it's a really huge is... negative impact for Republicans. Look, Democrats and Normans are pretty good evidence are totally whipped up. And there's nothing that's going to change that mm -hmm. between now and Election Day in 2018. So politically, when you're facing a situation like that, the only thing you can do is make sure your own people are energized and engaged. And you right. do that by delivering on your promises. This was a big promise. We didn't deliver on it. Uh, I think the Senate, uh, uh, you know, dealt, uh, not the Senate collectively, but the people that uh, couldn't get there, dealt a huge blow to Republican prospects. Do you blame John McCain? I don't blame anybody. Look, I admire John McCain. But yeah, I do think when you run on something for consecutive elections mm -hmm. and then have an opportunity to do it. And remember, if he'd have voted yes, this wouldn't have passed. We'd just go into conference, right. and yeah. it would have been renegotiated. So mm -hmm. yeah. you really cut off the chance to continue debate. Now, it's not over. The Senate will actually yeah. pick up and try to move forward in a bipartisan way. But from a House standpoint, until those guys over there can figure out what they can get 51 votes for, yeah. whether it's bipartisan mm -hmm. or partisan, not much more we can do. So they, uh, that process will begin in September. If they can get something, we'll certainly take a look at it. Uh, because I can tell you, the current system is failing badly. I mean, in this state, we got one provider. We're going to have a 69% rate increase. Our hospitals are, are taking care of patients are not being compensated for. And all the decisions are being made in Washington, D.C. That is not a good system for Oklahoma. And that's oh. the existing Obamacare system. Now, now Congressman, is, uh, and you just laid out the, the statistics that you feel makes Obamacare not uh, functional in some areas. But with some of the members... Is it the fact that it's not working, maybe, like you said, or is it the fact that President Obama's name is attached to it? No, I don't think it's the name. I mean, everybody can. I mean, it's called the Affordable reverse. Care Act, but it's all called. Well, everybody knows it, but it, it Obama became Care. Obamacare right. very early, uh -huh. and, and I'm but happy Trump to wants call to beat Obama. Way. I think he's got a point there. Trump wants to beat Obama well, again. I don't think. Well, and again, first, first of all, he never defeated Obama. He won, defeated Hillary Clinton, and hey, hey, uh, same you know, thing. Uh, same thing. Uh, you know, uh, it was President the third Obama, term of Obama. I disagreed with President Obama a lot, but I think uh, we now see what a gifted candidate he was. That's uh, fair. And so he, he knew a lot about running presidential campaigns. So, uh, you know, that aside, I think this really is on the merits. And, it, you know, the real division in some ways, aside from the partisan divide, is Medicaid expansion versus non-expansion states. Should we take uh, the And money? I will tell you, in Medicaid expansion, mm -hmm. uh, right now you get you get get it all free for three years and then it's 90 percent. Well, mm -hmm. nationwide on Medicare, the federal government pays an average of 63 percent. There's 37 percent from the state. We won't be able to sustain 90 percent for this select group. So I guarantee you the price of this at the state level is going to go up. And in a state like Oklahoma, yeah. we spend, I think, close to 20 percent of total state spending is now Medicaid. Yeah. That's right. More than education. We keep refusing so to do you it. want even yeah. more? Did McCain get even with Trump? No. Go ahead. Okay, we'll set it up.
Trump made fun of McCain. Did McCain get even with Trump by voting no? Don't answer that yet, Tom. <laughs> That's what we.